The giant Pacific octopus has over 200 suction cups on each arm. Hi friends, what's going on? My name is Brandon, and welcome to Nature Meets Paper, the place where we go on an adventure to discover the world of marine biology. I love sharing my adventures with aquatic creatures with you through science, stories, and art. It's my goal to raise awareness of our beautiful bodies of water and the creatures that live in them. Today we'll be discovering the Pacific waters of the giant Pacific octopus. Are you ready? Let's dive in. All right, let's get this adventure started. Today we'll be discovering the Enteroctopus deflianii, or giant Pacific octopus. They are found in cold, oxygen-rich waters of the Pacific Ocean, from California, Puget Sound, Canada, Alaska, and down to Japan. The water in these ecosystems is nutrient-rich and full of life. This turns the water a shade of green. Blue water is clean with no to little phytoplankton in it. Green water has tons of phytoplankton and brown water has sediment or other nasties in it. Octopuses can be found from the intertidal zone down to 6,000 feet deep. So I want my painting to have dark shadows and green water with light yellow light filtering down onto the octopus. Octopuses are solitary animals and love wedging themselves into crevices or cracks in rocks, pilings, corals, and other fun places. I start my painting from a toned burnt sienna background. I lay out my composition onto my canvas using the golden ratio to determine where I want the focal point to be. It is not quite the rule of thirds, but still feels organic. I found out that many of the most famous paintings in the world today use the golden ratio for placing their composition, whether they meant to or not. I tend to work my paintings in three steps. I have a blocking in phase, a modeling phase, and a detail phase. During blocking in, I use large, loose, thin strokes with larger brushes. In this case, I start with the farthest things from me and work my way closer or down. This is where I decide what kind of rock formations I will create for my octopus to hide in. It is a good idea to focus as much time on the background as the main subject. This takes patience and time, which I had to learn over several years. My modeling phase further defines these shapes and adds texture to the rock formations and the octopus. I use smaller brushes and get finer details. During this modeling phase, I lock in my midtones and darks. In this and blocking phase, I use mixing white to mix my colors. Mixing white is a paint that does not blow out the saturation of colors like titanium white can. During this painting, you will see me playing with the colors quite often. I want the painting to feel magical and filled with wonder. Some of the colors in my reference photo distracted too heavily from the giant Pacific octopus. So I changed them and had to play a bit. I am just learning to play with my compositions more as I get co comfortable painting. Let's transition to physical appearance and behaviors of the giant Pacific octopus. Here I want to give you a better understanding of what to look for if you see one in the wild or in captivity. Octopus are in the phylum Mollusca, meaning they are invertebrates related to clams, snails, and chitons. Octopus have an adapted internal shell that is flexible and soft in their head. Their class is Cephalopoda, which is Greek for head foot. This class consists of squid, nautilus, cuttlefish, and octopuses. Giant Pacific octopus are the largest and longest lived species in the world. Growing to an average weight of 110 pounds with an arm to arm span of 16 feet. 
The largest recorded octopus weighed 600 pounds and was 35 feet from arm tip to arm tip. Most octopuses are small and live for roughly a year or two at most, while the giant Pacific octopus lives between three and five years. They are bright red to brownish red in color, but can change their colors, and I will explain that later. The giant Pacific octopus have a large head and eight arms. Yes, I said arms. Octopus arms have suction cups in pairs running the length of the arm. Tentacles only have suction cups at the tips. So octopus have eight arms and squid have eight arms and two tentacles. I love learning new things. Each arm is covered in roughly 280 suction cups that can grow to 2.5 inches in diameter and hold 35 pounds each. Did you know that each suction cup can taste and smell? Well, you do now. Think about that anytime an octopus grabs you with its suction cups. Octopuses don't have any bones in their bodies. This allows them to squeeze through an opening the size of a lemon. The only thing stopping them from going smaller is their sharp chitin beak. This is chitin with an I, not an O. Chitin with an I is a mineral composition, and chitin with an O is a shelled animal. This beak looks like the beak of a parrot. Their head houses their gills, eyes, mouth, beak, siphon, organs, and ink sac. Their organs are weird as well. They have three hearts and nine brains. They have a central heart for gas exchange, a two-chambered heart to send blood out to the body, and a two-chambered heart to bring back oxygen-depleted blood to the body. Now let's get to those brains. They have a central brain that monitors and can take charge of the other brains if needed. And where would their other brains be? And why do they have eight others? If you guess that there is a brain at the base of each arm, you are correct. Each arm is controlled by its own brain. It thinks, processes, assesses, and moves all on its own. Then it sends that data to the central brain to be compiled and analyzed. Their gills need fresh oxygen-rich water flowed over them to transfer oxygen to the blood. Oh, fun fact, their blood is blue. Instead of having iron blood to transfer oxygen like we do, they have copper in their blood. This is great for pulling oxygen from the salt water. Colder water holds more oxygen than warmer water. Giant Pacific octopus have excellent eyesight. They can see in full color spectrum and have better night vision than we do. That's probably because they are nocturnal, being active mostly at night. They have W-shaped pupils. I don't know why they do, but they do. Giant Pacific octopus do have an ink sac in their body that can shoot ink from their siphon. This concoction of nasty is an irritant and can prove fatal to an animal that has been trapped in the cloud for too long. Octopuses don't like using this means of defense. It is costly in energy and means that they have to move. Octopuses are introverts. They like clamming up in their dens and staying there. Their preferred form of defense is camouflage. They are masters at camouflage. They can change their color and texture in one-tenth of a second. Their skin is covered in colored cells that can expand and contract, called chromatophores. Under this layer is a layer called iridocytes. This layer is iridescent and can bounce surrounding colors outwards. These cells are all controlled by each brain. 
Then they can change the texture of their skin to match their surroundings. After this adventure, go look up octopus camouflage videos. It's amazing. I think that covers the basics. I know there's more to say about their physical features, but I want to leave some things for you to discover on your own. Let's move to behavior. Octopuses are the Ravenclaw of the sea. They are highly intelligent, problem solvers, and when not stimulated properly, cause trouble. Since the food that they eat is hard to get to, or get into, they need to be stimulated during mealtimes in captivity. They love solving problems and taking things apart. Octopuses are the most intelligent invertebrate in the world. They have the intellect of a human toddler or child, except they can get into a child-proof medicine bottles with ease. Giant Pacific octopuses have been observed solving mazes, playing games, using tools, and communicating with divers or caretakers they interact with on a regular basis. They do this by shooting water, changing textures or colors in response to people that they know. It is their way of saying hello. Octopuses are also escape artists, challenging the likes of Houdini. My favorite story about an octopus escape is at an aquarium, where the octopus left its enclosure, crossed the floor, entered a fish tank, ate its fill, then went back to its tank with enough time that the water left behind on the floor was dry by opening time. It did this for several months, leaving the aquarium staff stumped as to where the fish were going. The only reason that they figured it out was because they put up security cameras all over and caught the octopus in the act. This is a great time to transition to our next part of the adventure. Let's discover what giant Pacific octopus eat and how they are doing. First, what do they eat? We know that they must figure out how to get into their prey or how to get to their prey. This has caused them to like figuring out puzzles. They primarily feed on crustaceans like crabs. Dungeness crabs are a favorite mollusks including clams, squid, and other octopuses, and some fish species. There's even been an observation of an octopus grabbing a seagull. They have their favorites, but will pretty much eat anything when times are tough. A great way to determine if a giant Pacific octopus is hiding in a cave or crack is to look at the pile of scraps and bones outside their den. They move this waste material outside their dens to keep it clean and clear. It is also a great way to attract other scavengers. You know that scene where Captain America rips apart a log instead of cutting it with an axe? Octopus can do that with a crab or clam. Now that's amazing strength. I used to struggle cracking Dungeness crabs with crab crackers when I was little. Then I found out that I was allergic to them, so maybe my body was trying to protect itself from the incoming poison. And I don't mean poisson, the French term for fish. Let's discover how they're doing. The giant Pacific octopus are not listed in the IUCN Red List. I use the IUCN Red List to examine population health in the world. Since GPOs are isolated in Hidewell, doing a widespread survey for population health is difficult. In places like the Puget Sound, we rely on divers to do some estimates for us. We are lucky to have several popular dive locations throughout the Salish Sea. In other places, it's more difficult to get an estimate. Females lay roughly 74,000 eggs before they die. An older or larger female will produce more eggs, but the average is 74,000. Males have a specialized arm specifically for presenting sperm packets to females. Seems funny, but it works. 
Females will spend seven months protecting and waving water over their eggs. Each egg is the size of a grain of white rice. During this entire period, the female will not leave her eggs. She will not even leave the den to eat. Eventually, she will die of starvation once the young hatch. She waits to see them off safely, then nature takes its course. Not every young will reach adulthood, but enough will survive to keep the population going. There are thought to be three distinct populations of giant Pacific octopus based on new genetic data. There's the Japanese, Alaskan, and West Coast US population. This might be helpful to know since there is an active fishery for these animals. They are taken for display as well as culinary markets. If we know that there are three distinct populations of giant Pacific octopuses in the world, we can specify by region for conserv conservation. Let's move back out and discover my personal encounter with this octopus. Most of my paintings are personal experiences with these animals. I go take my own reference photo and turn that into a learning adventure for you. Sometimes I don't know what an animal is when I see it. I, found out, I find out details as I do the research. Then other times I know an animal well and can fill out an in-depth adventure for you. In this case, I am quite familiar with the giant Pacific octopus since I live near the Salish Sea and Puget Sound in Washington State. I have seen and been fascinated by our local charismatic megafauna since I was six years old. Charismatic megafauna is a fancy term for large or well-loved animals in a set field. In the world of marine biology, think whales, dolphins, sharks, penguins, octopus, polar bears, etc. I love watching octopuses because it feels like they are watching right back. It is a special bond that someone has a hard time forgetting. As I work in my detail phase of this painting, I want to capture the inquisitive yet introverted curiosity of the giant Pacific octopus. I want it to feel like you are on a magical adventure, a feeling that you are in a world that is not our own. This giant Pacific octopus was seen in early 2020, before things went haywire. I was at the Odyssey in Scottsdale, Arizona with a friend, and this lovely octopus was sitting in the corner, watching the world go by, twirling its arms in mesmerizing patterns. Rows of suckers would flash and disappear into the shadows. I would watch as it would take in water, expand its head, and blow out a jet of water from its siphon. The water would hit its skin and dance away. I did not see any color changes, which is too bad. But this octopus was content where it was. There were not too many people close to the encounter during this moment, which was nice. It felt like it was just us and the octopus resting our thoughts. Light was trickling down beneath the waves, highlighting the quiet observer in the rocks. The giant Pacific octopus. Thank you so much for watching. I think this painting turned out great. I spent a lot of time on it, so I really hope that you enjoy. Please leave your stories and comments below. If you feel like it, subscribe and like this video. This month I am helping the American Red Cross as my monthly charity. 
I'll leave a link in the description so that you can help as well. Thank you so much for your time. Remember to spread love, curiosity, and creativity. I've been Brandon, and I will see you in our next adventure.